All right, guys, I got Ryan Levesque here. Welcome to the show, buddy. John, it's awesome to be here, man. But looking forward to this conversation. If people could only see that we both showed up with a similar hat today, <laughs> rocking our front row dad gear, man. First, let me just say I'm grateful for our time. Each time we connect, I feel like we have quality conversations, man. And I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing at home with your kids. I love the time that I've been able to spend with your kids. And I'm really grateful for the impact that you've had on my business. So thank you for all that and looking forward to getting into the chat today. Feeling is mutual, man. I'm just really grateful that you created this group and created this space. And uh, I didn't realize how much I needed this and wanted this in my life until it was actually there and had the opportunity to step into it. So props to you, man. You know, what's so interesting about you saying that is years ago, one of my best friends, Tim Nikolai, said to me that he wanted to go to lunch and that his intention behind the lunch was actually to help each other find our blind spots. And what was so great about that lunch is it was, what are the things that you can tell me that other people maybe aren't seeing or aren't willing to tell me? And for both of us, we found a common ground in the joy we experienced. And like, man, I didn't even know that I didn't have that, or I didn't even know that I needed that. Those are some of the best gifts because it's wonderful to be able to ask for a gift that you know you want. You're like, I need this, I want this. And somebody's like, here you go. And you're like, that's great. But Boy, when you don't even know you need it and then it shows up, to me, that's just pure joy. I love that. It's the best surprise of all. There's two things I'll say about that, which I think are absolutely true. So the first thing that comes to mind is that, look, when you're inside the bottle, you can't read the label. Yeah. And that's true for all areas of life. It's true for business. It's true for fatherhood. It's true for your relationship with your, your partner, your wife, your spouse. That's the first thing that comes to mind. The second thing is, and this is something that, that I teach our clients in our business, but it's a personal observation. I think it's really important. And that is in life, people don't know what they want. We do not know what we want. We can speculate, we can project, we can guess, we access a part of our brain where we're guessing what it is that we want. But what we have incredible clarity on is what we don't want. So we're very clear on the things in our life. Like, I don't like this. I don't want that. Now, I don't know what the answer is, but I know this is something that I don't want. And so oftentimes we don't know what we want until it actually shows up, until we actually see it. And, and Steve Jobs is, is famous for having a quote attributed to him around that same effect. People don't know what they want until you give it to them. And it's true for the iPhone when that was sort of its revolutionary you know, piece of technology when it first came out, but it's true for really everything in life. Um, and it's a good, I think, lens to look through life, not giving yourself too much pressure to know exactly what it is that you want in that next phase of life, fatherhood, being a better uh, husband, whatever it may be, but having clarity on the areas of your life that you're dissatisfied with and knowing that that's the area that requires attention. So it's really interesting that you um, had that conversation. That paradigm of people don't know what they want really was one of the principles in business building, but also you could easily relate to parenting. I'll never forget the first time somebody had quoted, I think it's like the Henry Ford. If I would have asked people what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. Right? And it's like yeah. such a mind-blowing concept. And since then, of course, seen that play out, heard that play out many times. Yeah, for but sure. That's cool. Let's talk about some wins in your life and celebrate what's going great. As from my vantage point, many things are going well for you. And if you can touch on family life and also uh, business. Yeah. So you know, I, I heard this quote, it was very trite, but it was very profound at the same time. And it was, you know, to be happy in life, you, you really only need three things. You need something to do, someone to love and something to look forward to. And that's it. Yeah, at the end of the day, like you got those three things, like you're good. And so for me, I'm very grateful to have all, you know, three of those things. So in the something to do uh, category with family, we are just in a really exciting season of our lives right now. Our two boys who are at this time, seven and, and 10 years old, um, have an amazing sort of combination of homeschool and camps and outdoor activities that they're doing right now, passion around chess, which one of the observations I learned from you when you and I were having a conversation, you mentioned this in passing, you may not even remember that you said this to me, but you said, what I'm looking for in life are opportunities where I am not leading or mentoring or teaching my children, but where we get to experience that learning journey together, that we can be shoulder to shoulder, side by side. 
And for me and for us and our family, that has been chess. We've literally started at the same place. And as an adult, I could beat my children in chess at the very early stages. Now they can beat me. And it's very humbling to have a seven-year-old beat you and to feel like you have to catch up. Whereas in most things that we do, whether it's athletics or whatever, I'm, you know, 10 steps ahead of my children and they're trying to keep up with me. I'm trying to keep up with them. So that's been a really rewarding experience and a win in our family that we've been able to enjoy together. In the someone to love category coming out of the Front Row Dads retreat, which was an amazing experience. And uh, I can't recommend it highly enough for anybody who has the opportunity to do it, because I know it's incredibly limited to be able to do it. Walked away with a great um, sort of intention and just had an amazing time with my wife this past weekend where our boys are at the uh, their grandparents and had a whole weekend together. And it was like, you know, fell in love all over again and got to spend a full day together, a, a sun up to sundown date day from morning to night, which was really awesome. Dreaming about the future, planning for the future, having some space, which was really, really cool. And then the something to look forward to category, speaking of planning for future, you've heard me share this, but we have a sort of three phase adventure that we are planning in our lives. And the first phase of that adventure is traveling across the continent in an expedition vehicle that will take us to some of the remote parts of the country, the remote, most remote parts of the continent. And uh, we will be taking possession of that vehicle in about uh, two and a half months time right now. So wow. it's been 17 months in the making to design this, to build this. And so two and a half months away, we can taste it, we can feel it. And we've already gotten our first maiden voyage, a month long trip uh, plan that we're really, really excited about. So those are some wins in life. And um, yeah, um, and on top of it all, business is going great as well. And we've got a big major product launch happening in our business that's happening right around the corner, layered on top of it that kind of ties everything all together. Wow. Dude, I just find myself feeling so much joy and happiness for you, you know, in in, in all of what you just shared, like beautifully articulated. I mean, the most important categories that you could talk about thrilled for all of it, man. And inspiring too. You know, it's it's so interesting when you hear about another man's wins with his family or his kids and how immediately it starts to impact me. Like you started talking chess. I'm like, I'm playing chess with my kids today. (laughs) That's how fast, right? Another man's wins can become your wins, uh, which I think is the most beautiful part of it. Or the minute you're like, we're we're doing this trip. I'm like, where are we going next? Like I can't help but, but want to emulate and because I can see it, I can feel it. I can, you know, and look, man, I know some of that's going to be challenging, but it's a good thing that I tend to only remember the joy of the joy right. of like, when we looked at these, uh, we looked at pictures recently of like 2017. I do a photo album every year, a digital photo album, and the best of the pictures. And we looked at 2017 and I'm like, that year was amazing. And I think if you asked me at the end of 2017, I would have had a lot of trauma about that year too. But I was like, oh, it looks like all we did was had a great time. Like if somebody yeah. else looked at that, they're like, that's the perfect family having a perfect time all the time. Right. I remember there being some trauma if I really get into it in 2017, but that's, well, that's great stuff. You mentioned the first part of your adventure. Are you, are you able to talk about phase two and three or are you going to leave yeah, that absolutely. as a surprise? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we've, we have a, you know, so my kind of grand plan for our family is um, I've got a 10 year old now and I figure I've got six or seven years before, you know, he's got one foot out the door and he's looking at the next phase of his independent life. And um, we have a three phase adventure that we want to take um, our family on. And so phase one is a, a, an expedition vehicle that will allow us to travel to the most remote parts of the continent, and really see the natural world and spend a lot of time in nature, visiting the national parks, being able to do a trip up to Alaska, potentially as far south as the tip of South America, and really just you know, kind of uh, a transcontinental experience that will be a memory for the rest of our family's lives. So that's sort of phase one. Phase two, we've uh, been working hard for the last basically year and a half at securing a second citizenship in Europe to allow us to live indefinitely as a second place of residence across um, Europe. 
And so we want to spend a year um, living and traveling across Europe and experiencing different cultures and languages. And my wife and I did that in Asia before we had kids. Um, we spent about five years living and traveling across Asia. And our kids are now at the age where we feel like they're ready to do that across Europe. So that's phase two, a, a year long experience in Europe. And then phase three, which is kind of the big one when the boys are a little bit older, when they're teenagers, um, we uh, have plans to get expedition yachts and circumnavigate the globe and basically do a a trip of a lifetime. So three phases, three stages corresponding with life, and then really building a business that allows you to do these things, which is critical, right? Like there's the, you know, the practical things, well, what do you do for money? Right? <laughs> like, how do you, you know, how do you make all of that happen and all that work? And it, it comes down to having leverage. It comes down to having leverage and leverage, not in the sense of debt, but leverage in the sense of you are able to put work in up front that you can reap the rewards of for many, many, many years into the future. Um, yep. And that's something that I think about in all ways, all aspects of life and all axes of business and every aspect of that. I know we'll touch on that, um, but those are kind of the three phases of the adventure and uh, we're pretty excited about it. And it's cool to put this out on a vision board or some equivalent, but then to actually take action and make it happen and to be quite literally a few weeks away from kicking off phase one of this adventure, something that we envisioned probably about two years ago when we first kind of set this intention. It was very, very exciting to see a plan come together like this. Man, that's so cool. And you know, as you talk about these phases, and especially when you start talking about how many years you have, you know, before the next adventure begins for your kids or a phase of life, we need to circle back and have a longer conversation at some point. And I'll bring it to the guys too. But do you know Rich Christensen, uh, uh, Legato family? Have you heard of Rich's work and what he's done? I don't know that I have. And I'm I probably should. So as this show is dropping, his will have been probably two prior to this, uh, if the calendar lines up exactly that way. But one of the things he talked about, and you'll love this, Ryan, because he's so meticulous. I mean, here's a guy who's built many hugely successful businesses, but put family first. So meets the front row dad criteria, but has a, a real interesting take on like what happens when a kid's eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And I'll, I'll give a little teaser here. One of the things he does is when his kids turn 16, he helps them launch businesses. Mm. And he then he mentors them through the business process, which they then sell at 18. They sell the business together. And then those kids go on, a, on an epic journey um, serving somewhere and from 18 to 20. But all of his kids have built million dollar businesses by the time they were 18. Wow. And it is a remarkable, and I'm just on the tip of the iceberg here. Like, you're going to love how he is a technician. He is like his planning and execution and like how he's mapped it out. It's, it's really cool. I can't wait to introduce you to Rich and to our group. Uh, he, he's likely going to be involved in some summits and retreats in the future. But oh, it's awesome. fascinating. Man. What a teaser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, anyway, I just know you love that stuff. So, um, because he's he does vision very well, and then he plans, and his execution is incredible. So, anyway, right. just wanted to share that with you. But let's love talk it. about how I, I think it's natural for everybody who's listening to go. All right, man, you got to tell me how have you been able to build a business that supports this? Uh, because I mean, it's a normal question, right? All right, dude, how are you going to fund this? How do you get that time? We talk about leverage. So let's talk about that from how you literally have done that for yourself, but that'll be a nice transition to how you've done that for others and specifically how you're doing that for front row dads right now. So let's try to unpack all of that. Yeah. You know, so if I go back in time to as far back as 2008, which was the last job that I ever had, you know, I kind of reached a point in my life where I had this quarter life crisis where I could see my future. And I was in a corporate job. I was working in finance and, you know, I was doing all the things. I wore a suit. I had a commute. I had an office that I went to. I had a, you know, a team that I was managing. I was, you know, doing a lot of business travel. I had that life. And um, I kind of had this quarter life crisis where I saw my future. And I said, if I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to become my boss at you know 65 years old who was on the sort of precipice of retiring and i said like i will achieve a lot of professional success but really like is this what i want to 
do with my precious time on earth. And so I kind of had this, this moment, this crisis, I reached this, you know, this valley of despair, but through that had a tremendous amount of clarity around things that I wanted to achieve. And so at the time, my wife and I didn't have kids. It was just the two of us. And I knew that we wanted to start a business that was location independent. So we could live anywhere in the world. We could travel anywhere that we wanted. I wanted something that would provide unlimited earning potential, meaning that we would just not be capped in what it is that we could, in terms of earning for ourselves, but eventually the impact that we wanted to be able to have in the world. We wanted something that was low risk, that was high margin, that was big opportunity. So I had kind of all these criteria that I was looking at, but I didn't know exactly what that meant. And um, it led me to study under someone I consider to be one of my great mentors. And I think we all have mentors and coaches in our lives. And I think it's important to always honor who those mentors and coaches are. Uh, a man by the name of Dr. Glenn Livingston. And Dr. Glenn, by any conventional measure, is a genius. Like I consider like guys like you and me, like we're, we're smart. He is a genius. And it was a, a tremendous opportunity to study underneath him and learn from him and really learn psychology of consumerism in a very deep way. He comes from a family of 17 PhD psychologists, just a brilliant, brilliant man and um, someone that I, that I learned from. And, and I learned a model that he had used in big businesses, large companies that allow you to understand your customer at a deep emotional level. And then from there, took that sort of model to build my own first little six-figure business. And it started in a tiny little obscure market. It's embarrassing to even say it, teaching people how to make Scrabble tile jewelry, but uh, built that business. That business had its season, um, led me to create another business in the orchid care market, teaching people how to care for their orchids. And then eventually memory improvement and fish oil supplements and tennis and golf and went into 23 different niche markets, learning a model that is all about having leverage by asking the right questions. So we talked a little bit earlier about how important it is to ask good questions and the fact that you can't ask what people want because people don't know what they want. You've got to ask them what they don't want because that's what we have clarity on. And it eventually led to a, a model that's now known as the ask method, which we built an entire company around. It's a five-time Inc. 5,000 company, whereby we figured out a way that's more effective than anything that I've ever seen to generate leads and clients online using the power of asking questions in the form of what we call a quiz funnel. So a quiz funnel is when someone lands on your website, you begin by asking a series of questions to better understand who they are. So just like a doctor, you can diagnose their situation and prescribe the best next step. And when you do it well and you do it right, it's an incredibly compelling promise. And if you've ever taken like a personality assessment or the strength finders quiz or the Colby test or DISC or Enneagram or any of these sort of assessments that help you learn something about yourself, you understand how powerful that psychology is, the power of self-discovery. And so we refined this model going into 23 different markets, worked with and partnered with businesses in all sorts of different spaces, had a couple major exits on the back of this, decided to write a book teaching people this topic, and now built an entire company around it where we train other businesses and we have a technology platform that over 12,000 of these quiz funnels has been built on. And so professionally, this is where I've spent my time and my life. And the reason I was attracted to this in the first place, and the reason why this has been such a pull is because number one, it's given us a tremendous amount of leverage in, in our own lives to have automated lead generation, client generation online that works on autopilot 24-7, 365 days a year. But for me, what's so fulfilling is being able to see the impact it has both on the businesses that apply it, the entrepreneurs who have the experience of achieving that success and the fruits of the labor, but then the end users, the end clients and customers who go through this experience, who are transformed when they go through a well-designed quiz funnel and they walk away from that experience and they have changed themselves. And so for me, professionally, this is where I've spent my maybe not 10,000 hours, maybe it's 100,000 hours at this point. And I know you and I have done some work together, so you can attest uh, to what that can feel like and look like, but it's also incredibly rewarding to see what it's done for literally thousands of, of people around the world. And, and now, right here, right now, what's seriously, it's one of the most exciting things happening to me in my life professionally is seeing this rolled out to front row dads. Because 
I feel like what you've built is this artisanal, boutique, incredibly curated experience for a small number of men, relatively speaking, when we look at the scope of the world. And I see this as the thing that is going to just explode front row dads in a hugely positive way and expose it to many, many, many more men who could benefit in a tremendous way from everything that you've created and built. I literally can't sleep. I find myself waking up right now in this season of life because over the last six years, you know, we've just very organically, naturally, I feel like at a, it was the perfect pace for me and for those who were joining, like how Front Row Dads has built now over six years to now approaching 300 members, 15 different countries. And the foundational principles that we've been able to build, the core values, our ethos of engagement, the systems, the online summits, the group calls, the platform in which it's all built on, we wanted that to be strong before we reached out and had too many people too fast decide to step into our world. We wanted to make sure that we could host them well, support them well, guide them well. And so through this early group of members, we've built something that I think is now at a perfect timing, ready for that. Hmm. So I, I'm, I'm thrilled about it. Do you want to talk a little bit about specifically what we're building with Front Row Dads and like how we got there I, because I could tell this story, but you're, I feel like you're perfect to tell like what we're actually building, like what we're doing, what's rolling out. Cause it's live now, especially as people are listening to this, they could go and take the quiz, which is exciting, which is I'm thrilled about it. Yeah. Um, I'll take a stab and then why don't you fill in the gaps? Cause right. I think there's probably you, you and I will see this from two different perspectives and, and there are different things that we'll, we'll see. So zooming up one level. So a quiz funnel is arguably the single most powerful top of funnel strategy that any business can have. And the reason for that is again, when someone first lands on your website, no matter what type of traffic you're using to send people to your website, whether it's off the back of a podcast, whether it is through social media, like Facebook and and LinkedIn and Instagram, whether it's through video like uh, YouTube, for example, or just um, you know organic traffic, people landing on your website. It doesn't matter. Arguably, the most powerful strategy that you can start with is a quiz funnel because it allows you to sift and sort people into different buckets so you can ultimately customize what they experience and see next. And that could mean showing different people different products. It could mean everybody sees the same product, but you're positioning that product in a different way. It can mean customizing the messages the messaging, the stories, the case studies, the testimonials that you put in front of someone based on their answers. It allows you to speak to people as an individual in the same way that, John, if you and I were having a conversation in person, right? And I said, hey, front row dads, what's that all about, man? And you're like, oh, it's this great organization where we help you know men who are fathers first with businesses become better fathers and become better husbands. And I were to say, hey, John, like that's an area I'm struggling with. Like, what should I do? Like, tell me, like, what's my advice? Well, you're not going to just immediately begin spouting out advice. You're going to begin by asking a series of questions, right? You'd be like, well, tell me a little bit about yourself, man. Like, you know, how many kids you got? What are their ages? Like, tell me a little bit about like some of the areas exactly. of your life. You're going to ask me some questions to better understand who I am. So you can diagnose just like a doctor and prescribe the best next step. Now that best next step might be, oh, you need to listen to episode 23 from the podcast. It's the perfect episode for you. Or it might be, look, we have this workshop that we do. And I think you would be perfect for this workshop. Or it might be talking about a facet of the workshop based on one little thing that I said about where I struggle. Maybe I struggle with forming a connection and a bond with my children, whatever it may be. So just like a doctor, you're going to diagnose, prescribe. Now, the only problem is there's only one of you. And you can only have one of those conversations at a time. But imagine if your website could have that conversation that we just described right now with a thousand people a day, automatically on autopilot, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. A well-designed quiz funnel allows you to create that experience and allows you to have so much leverage. So instead of those one-on-one -on -one conversations you're having to convert potential leads into clients or students or customers, your website is doing that all day, every day. So with all that as the backdrop and this idea that as men, as fathers, I think there's a couple of things that 
happen. Number one, if you didn't grow up with the perfect paradigm as a father, that exemplar, that example, we just don't know what we don't know. We have these blind spots like we do. And it's like, I don't know, like, I think I'm doing okay here, but I'm not sure. I really don't have a measuring stick. I don't really know what my area of opportunity is, where I should be focusing on, like what what stuff should I be doing better at? That self-knowledge, that self-discovery of how to become a better dad all centers around these idea of blind spots. And that conversation that you had, that lunch that you had, I think it's a conversation you've probably had many, many times, variations of it with many, many men. And so the question we asked ourselves is, is there a way that we could have this conversation online? to help identify what's your single biggest blind spot as a dad. And we created something called the dad quiz. And you can take it by going to thedadquiz.com. And it's an assessment to help you identify what's your biggest blind spot as a father. And based on all the conversations that you've had, the thousands of men who have been impacted by this podcast and your work and just the ripple effect that's happened, what we've identified is I believe that there are five major blind spots, Yep, five major areas that tend to come up over and over and over again. And the reality is when you identify what your single biggest blind spot is, it allows you to put your focus on that specific area of being a better father. And not only that, but you've identified what the next steps are that someone should take based on that blind spot. So it's this really prescriptive process to kind of have self-knowledge around how you're doing as a dad, what is the biggest area of opportunity, and then what you should do about that. And these areas of opportunity revolve around things like the way in which you spend time with your kids, the emotional connection that you're able to make, the gaps that exist in certain time that you're spending in areas of that relationship. And so we work together with a whole bunch of people who help make this possible. I mean, you can you know list off all these people. It's been an incredible village-like effort to get this off the ground, to build the first ever assessment of its kind specifically and exclusively for dads to help identify the biggest blind spot that you have in terms of being a father. And the cool thing is you can take this assessment 100% free. And then based on your results, we have a series of next steps that you can consider taking as far as what your next moves should be and uh, what to do about it based on those answers that come through. So I'll pause there because I know it's a sort of you know, big answer to a short question or long answer to a short question, but that's really what we've been able to create. And I think it's number one, going to help everyone who's already part of the front row dad community. So whatever that means for someone listening to this right now, if you're part of the tightest inner circle, or if this is your first episode that you're ever listening to, to the podcast, it's going to help everybody here. And it's also going to help introduce what front row dads is all about to thousands upon thousands of dads that have no idea that this even (laughs) exists and lead them to that very moment in time that I think many of us have experienced, myself included, which I mentioned at the beginning of this conversation. I didn't know what I wanted, but when I saw it, I knew that this was it. Mm. So I'm I'm so glad that you went first. (laughs) You said all that. I really am, man. Because one of the great joys of the last 12 months of my life has been watching you go into what is a channeling of information. Um, and I'm so glad that all of this is being recorded as well, because I'm it's usually how I feel when we're talking. I'm like, thank God that was being recorded. So thank you for that. And I do want to take a moment and recognize the team, the village that all worked so hard, both from your team, from the Front Row Dad team, and anybody who might have played a role in, in helping bring this to life. You know, there's a couple of things here that I want to shed light on. The first one is why we wanted to do this and why we were so excited to become, you know, aligned with and a client of your team and your methodology and why this was the right thing to do for us. Mm. So this is really fascinating. You know, props to, I'm going to connect some dots here. 
because you and I were at Darius Mirshazadeh's house recently with our families. Darius years ago was instrumental in Front Row Dads creating our core values. And he wrote the core value equation. It's how he scaled from a hundred to a thousand employees in three years. He believes that core values were critical to that. So he helped us to write our Front Row Dad core values of which are curiosity, execution, and community are our three core values. Curiosity meaning to be always asking the biggest and best questions in our business and at home. And all the people and resources that we brought to Front Row Dads, when I think about what truly I've walked away with, when I think about what resource has been most helpful, oftentimes it's actually the question, right? Like even like a Dan Sullivan, who, not how. That's a question. Who do I need to, but not how per se. The question that we're asking here, the men about their blind spots, the questions that we've curated in the group to help each other identify what is the next move. So first it's the line of questioning that we should be asking each other as men, but also the the strengthening of that skill so that we can ask these questions at home. Mm. So curiosity fits with the quiz perfectly intentionality is like, once we've been able to diagnose, like you just said, then what's our next move? Because we don't want to just ask the question, tell you what your blind spot is and say, good luck with that. But like, here's what you can do next. And part of what needs to be done next is who you need to align with. So we're giving resources of men that you'd need to connect with. Who do you need to then connect with to address this, to make progress in this area of your life? It fits with our core values perfectly. The other piece of this is that one of our pillars in Front Row Dads is business evolution. Now, we are family first guys. We're family men with businesses, not businessmen with families. But we also want to win in all these areas of life. I want to show my kids how to run a successful business. But one of the things I'm committed to is that uh, you know I have a certain schedule that has strict boundaries to it. And I don't want to be the guru of Front Row Dads in the future. I'm not looking for people to want to find their way into front row dad so that I can provide all the wisdom. Gosh, we'd be doomed if that were the case, but I want to learn with everybody, you know, and this is one of the most leverageable ways for me to grow front row dads. And the other benefit of this I'm thrilled about is that I'm so excited for all the guys to take the quiz, figure out, Oh my God, I can go do this with my own business. And I imagine all the time that they'll be able to spend with their families as a result. So these compounding efforts, that's what lights me up inside. That it seems like I'm doing something that helps front row dads. And in the process, I'm giving away a resource that I think is like the secret weapon. But like, you guys are going to thank me for this five years from now. And this is going to help you to leverage uh, your time more effectively so that you can be at home with your kids. We got to put those right dominoes in place. So that feels really good. And the other great part is that I always felt that if somebody came and just took the quiz and that was it, that was the end of our relationship, they would walk away being a better dad for that two minute quiz they took. Hmm. Because now they have some awareness around things, some language around some topics, ideas that they might not have previously had. So even if that touch point ended for whatever reason in that moment, which I hope it doesn't, but it may, I still feel like it's a gift to the world. So I'm thrilled about that. Hey guys, quick break here to talk about a new program that we launched a few months ago and it's having a huge impact. It's called the Summit Series and here's how it works. Every 60 days, we take a breather from the business and focus on improving life at home. So over 12 months, we take guys through the complete fatherhood journey, covering all six pillars, all of the bases to make sure that you're making progress in the areas of life that matter most. Now we've all seen, and we've likely been this guy at times, a hard charging business dude who spends the majority of their hours focused on growing the business while investing in the family takes a back seat. You know, and I've heard the phrase, I've said the phrase, hey, I just got to get through the busy season. Well, for most, the busy season never ends. And we just are one of those guys who gets to the end of their life saying, I wish I would have spent more time with my family. So to ensure that that does not happen to you or anyone in our community, we created a program to keep us all on track. It's a space to get focused on how to take our families to the next level. So here's a few reasons why the impact has been so profound of the Summit series. Number one, it's a giant pattern interrupt. While many of us have been very intentional about creating habits and routines and rituals that help us to thrive, they can also hurt us if we don't have moments where we break away, take a day, and see things from a different angle. You know, we all know the difference of like a five, 10, or 15 minute 
meeting at work where we might be able to address one thing. It's very topical and where we can step away off-site one day planning session where big moves are made. And that's what this is for our families. We also know that you know it's not always about new ideas. It's about true ideas. So while we're all interested in novelty, we have to be careful of that. And we have to remember that we want the principles also that have been tested over decades and centuries and you know, that work for not just one family, but many families. So our summits are a mix of new and true ideas that serve men. We also believe in blind spots. You know, it's one thing to go out and listen to a podcast, like, hey, you're listening to one now, or to listen to an audiobook or sit and read a book, but that's one directional. You just are getting the content plugged into your head and you're able to contemplate it, and it does serve a purpose. But there's a totally different level of learning when you're in conversation with somebody who's hearing what you're saying, challenging your thoughts, getting vulnerable with you, reflecting back, giving you specific targeted ideas. And so within our brotherhood, that is what makes this summit series very different than any other type of learning that most men are getting exposed to. And lastly, one of the big reasons that guys benefit from the summit series is you're watching how other people design and facilitate conversations. So you're getting the benefit of learning from Steve Burchard, our designer and facilitator. He's one of the top facilitators in the world. And you can bring these same principles on how to host an online gathering like this to lead your business and other groups that you care about, your church groups, your family, uh, and whatever it might be, men's groups that you're a part of in other industries. So learning to lead in this way, guys constantly walk away and say, not only did I walk away with amazing content, but I got great ideas of how I could run my meetings, which is fantastic. So if you want the best for your family, then you should have the best training. And we're the first company to address this topic specifically for high-performing entrepreneurial businessmen. So rather than me talking about it anymore, here's what one of our attendees has to say about the Summit Series. I just wanted to share some gratitude. This event was really one of the reasons I wanted to jump in to make connections. And there wasn't a single person that I interacted with who was not just on such a high level Everyone was committed to being here, to being a part of this process, learning and growing and supporting each other. So I, I'm super grateful to everyone that I interacted with and to be a part of the brotherhood. So I'm looking forward to just taking everything to the next level with you guys. So thank you. All right, guys, to register for the next Summit event or become a Summit Series member, which I recommend within the brotherhood, go to frontroadads.com and click join the brotherhood today. Yeah, so much there. I'll share just a few things. You know, you mentioned about the power of questions. And, and one of my mentors once uh, said something and uh, it's always stuck with me. And he said, you know, questions are the language of our mind. That's the language that we converse with ourselves. We're always asking ourselves questions. You know, why did I do this? What should my next move be? Should I wear this? Should I wear that? What should I have for dinner tonight? Like we're constantly asking ourselves questions. We're posing questions to our brain and we're answering those questions. And, you know, the answers, as they say, are easy. The questions are hard, but when you change the quality of the questions you ask yourself, you change the quality of your life. It's a profound but incredibly elegant way of just thinking about your entire worldview. Change the questions you ask yourself and you will change your life. It's quite as simple as that. And so when you hone the skill of getting really good at asking really good questions, and I think that you've heard this before, I think you, John, are one of the best question askers. I, behind your back, do a John Roman impression of a question that you might just throw out like out of nowhere, you know, like, you know, tell me one thing that, and it's like, <laughs> it's like, yep, that's a Roman question. So it's an area of your life that I think you've, you've clearly spent time thinking about and intentionally getting better at. But from a business standpoint, asking the right questions to the right people in the right way can transform your business. But the spillover effect that that can have with your children, with your spouse, and with yourself yeah. is profound. And yeah. so this is one of these skills that I feel like is not only evergreen, not only universal, but it is uh, something that will last you for the rest of your life. And so I've, from a different angle, spent a lot of time studying the power of questions and asking the right types of questions in the right way 
So that way you can get the right answers and be able to inform and advise people. So that's sort of my response to that. And then, yeah, you know, being able to do this together, I think is, is really, really cool, really exciting. I hope it's going to be inspiring to people who are interested in um, possibly applying this in their own business for anyone listening to this, who also happens to have a business because this has changed my life. Like this is quite literally the thing that's changed my life. It's made, I grew up as a blue collar kid, first in my family to go to college. My dad worked nights, my mom cut hair in the basement of our house, first to go to college in my family, first to go on to do all of these things. And this has transformed our financial future for our family in a way that I never dreamed possible as a, as a working class kid from New Hampshire, living in the middle of the mountains, just seeing what it's been able to do for our family to create the future for ourselves. And I've seen firsthand what this has been able to do for men in all corners of the world who have been able to build businesses that are allowing them to, to do everything that Front Row Dad stands for. So when you combine these two things together, it just feels like it's, um, it's really special. It's a really cool amalgamation. All right. So talk about people being interested in this process. We got it. To, I know we're coming up against the clock here, but yeah. dude, do you want to tell the story or do you want me to tell the story about what happened at the retreat? Because you talk about people being interested in this. This is a fascinating case study of like the level of interest that exists around this process. So I'll tee it up. And then, I'd, and then I want you to, to bring it home because I think you'll do a better job. So we came into this retreat and we had sort of a, a thought. And the thought was, um, let's debut the quiz in person, in the room. Let's get people like super excited about it, show it in person. And then what we thought we would do is raise money for the Front Row Foundation by saying, who else would like to have a quiz like this? And we'll just auction off a quiz where my team and I will build it for some person in the room, whoever you know wins that auction. And then, you know, I'm an eternal optimist. I'm always a half, you know, glasses half full kind of guy. I'm always looking at, well, what's the opportunity? How do you turn these lemons into lemonade? And we were at the retreat and the quiz wasn't yet done. And in the moment, third day, final day of the retreat, you and I sat down at breakfast. And I think we both came to a similar thought, but I, I said, look, I don't think we should force it. I really don't. The quiz is not ready. I don't want to try to raise money for Front Row Foundation with something that's not yet done. If we show people, you know, the, the unfinished house with all, all the decorations and the furniture and the punch list being finished, they're going to look at it and say, Meh, it's not that great. So I said, I think it's better off. Let's just hold off. We won't do it, even though that was our plan coming into the retreat. Fast forward to the final session of the retreat, three days, an amazing experience. You're kind of going to close out the retreat. And then you started to share something. What happened next? Yes. Yeah, so, so I was like, guys, you know, I really, I, I, I wanted to do this. This was the intention, but I also want to honor the container that we have. And that whenever I have a feeling in the room, it's like, if I don't get a full body, yes, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to force it. I'm not going to. And I just made that decision, guys. I was going to do this with Ryan and I didn't do it. And then one of our members, Mike, goes, wait a minute, dude, I would pay $5,000 for that right now you know, to work with Ryan on this project. And I was like, oh, I, I didn't even, I was so caught off guard by it before I could get the words out of my mouth to even respond to Mike. Kasim Aslam, who is a legendary human in, by, you know, in his own right, like Google ads, big agents, like just smart, fun. Like the, whenever he speaks, I listen. And so do so many others. He goes, are we doing this? I'm definitely in for 7,000. And then, and then it's like popcorn. People are like 8,000, 9,000. I mean, and I, I am no longer the, I'm not, controlling this moment. It is a <laughs> runaway train. It is, it is off. Uh, I am now witness to, to men in the room and, and Kasim just voluntarily goes, do, guys, do you even understand what Ryan does? Like, do you know how legendary this human is? I've been following his work for years. When he speaks, I just listen. If there was any chance I'd have to be able to connect with Ryan on this particular subject, 
just hands going up. We're at $31,000 in the blink of an eye. And what I felt in the room, and I, by the way, there is a story that even extends beyond this, which I might save for another episode. I will tell you it ultimately resulted in a hundred plus thousand dollars being raised for Front Row Foundation, which by itself, the number of people that will be positively impacted as a result of these very generous men. These are 50 men in a room that raised a hundred thousand dollars for Front Row Foundation in a matter of a few minutes. The beautiful part of it. It was a group of generous, successful men who all threw the best of what they had in that moment into the table and said, let's create something here, giving, um, supporting. And the best part of all is it's like, it's the greatest example in my mind of a win, win, win all the way around. People heard about the quiz funnel. You know, we were raising money for charity and it created a lot of buzz. It was a very positive experience to say the least. It was wonderful, Ryan, from my perspective, to see the men honor who you are as a person and have so much faith. What a nod in the direction of the ask method and what a testament those men uh, were to you and your business because what a reputation you had in that room. I really want to honor you for that. So thank you. I appreciate it. And um, what is you know profound to me is we didn't even show the quiz. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. We didn't even show the quiz and we weren't even going to do it. We yeah. weren't. I mean, that right. morning, you and I, we, we, we came to terms with it. We had this idea and we said, let's just save it. We'll do it when the yeah. time is right. We're not going to do it. And then when Mike Wagner just said 5,000. Yep. 6,000, 7,000. Wait, we doing this thing? Cost them doing it? 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, 14,000, 15,000, just around the room. You and I just were like, I, it was an out of body experience where it was like, this is no, we didn't, we said this was not going to happen, but, but in that moment and uh, the winning bid was $31,000 and you and I thought maybe we could raise a few thousand dollars. Absolutely. You know, and I think it, it number one, it, it speaks to so many things, just to your point. Uh, it speaks to this community that you've built, the the type of, of men that are here in this world that you've created. It speaks to the value that people saw in that room to have a quiz funnel like this, where for, for some people, you know, just getting a handful of customers or clients immediately makes it a, a no-brainer. For some people, it's it's a it's a single client will will make it a no-brainer at that price. But seeing the leverage that it provides, instead of having to, you know, spend that time away from your family, chasing after leads, chasing after customers, all that time to build that business that's ultimately there to support your family, to have something working on autopilot that just does it for you is certainly it's transformed my life. It's, it's given us financial independence and some of the men in the room who have used and applied it in their own business, they've experienced it themselves. It was just really cool in that moment to have everything all together in something that we were not going to do. That's right. Like we were literally going to just call it off and we did call it off. Um, (laughs) That's right. Different direction. The room demanded otherwise. Um, (laughs) I'm going to say one last thing about why this quiz was such a, an easy choice for me to make as a yes for front row dads mm-hmm. before anybody leaves this recording, leaves this interview, pushes pause or whatever. I want to let you know that we, we wanted to give you something today that could help you to build your business. So stick around here for another minute because I want to tell you about that. But Ryan, you're one of the coolest things, and you mentioned this earlier, is the, the type of people that were in this room, the quality of the men that we have within our Front Row Dad community. To me, it's perhaps the most cherished piece of this entire business is the quality of the people. And why I love the quiz so much is that it is part of a process of identifying who is right for our community. But not only will it make an impact on everybody who just takes it and goes to side to go and, and takes action on the results that, you know, and the, and, the, and the advice or the guidance or the counsel or whatever that we provide to them. Hey, here's some ideas, here's some resources, here's some strategies. But when somebody finds their way into our community is a critical part of the process to identify not whether or not they're a good person, but whether or not they are the right person for our community and we're the right community for them. This is a critical element of that. So uh, I wanted to mention that. That's my last piece, but 
in our final few minutes here, can you tell the guys if they want to learn more, if they want to take that step, if they think this could apply, or even if they just want to find out if it could apply to their business, what do they do next? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm so glad we're doing this interview, this conversation now. And and the reason for that is um, once every year, we do something really special. We do a week-long quiz funnel workshop, where basically it's we take people through the process of, of what we went through in a you know sort of paid client engagement. We do it and we do it at scale. Now it's normally one hundred dollars to be able to attend this thing. So it's not thirty one thousand dollars. <laughs> it's far more affordable. It's it's only a hundred dollars. But because we want to do something really special for everyone here, if you go to the link quizfunnel.com forward slash FRD for front row dads, and you type in the coupon code FRD, and then click the link that says apply code, it'll actually take your ticket price from $100 to be 100% free. So it'll take it from $100 to zero. You don't have to even enter a credit card. You just, you sign up, um, answer a question or two, and you're in. And what we do in this week-long workshop is first and foremost, we help you identify if a quiz is right for you, for your business. We help you identify what type of quiz is right for you. There are three types of quiz funnels. We help you identify which one's right for you. We help you identify your quiz topic, the big idea that's going to get people excited about taking your quiz. Like for example, the Front Row Dads quiz is what's your what number one blind spot as a dad? So we go through that process. We help identify the questions to ask when people take your quiz. What's the next step you're going to drive people to? The offer, what are you going to put in front of people after they've taken your quiz to, to become a customer, a client? What's that next step? Is it going to be to, to book a call with you? Is it going to be to attend your workshop? Is it going to be to buy a product? Product right then and there. So we go through the entire process step by step over the course of a week. We go through dozens of examples. If you're the type of person like me, you're a visual person, you want to like see examples and action of businesses like yours. So the only catch is that we only do this once a year and I we do do this live. So you have to be present for the week to do it. But if you're listening to this, if you're watching this um, right now, you're participating in this, your timing is perfect. And so all you need to do is like, before you forget, <laughs> like do it right now. If you're listening to this in your car, or whatever, like pull over, pull on the side of the road, pull up your phone, just go to quizfundal.com slash FRD, enter that coupon code FRD, and you'll be in, you'll get access to everything I've mentioned and much, much more. So yeah, John, that's the best next step for anybody who would like to dive deeper. If you're interested or even just curious to kind of learn a little bit more about how this all works. And I agree about, listen, if you feel like if there's a, if there's a part of you that like, man, this could be something that helps me to leverage my business. If, I, if anything that they just said made sense to me on any level, and you want to take that one step further, then you got to do it now because otherwise it's just going to go away. It's just, you got to get wrapped up in life. So here's another thought, Ryan. Would you also suggest that if somebody's like, man, but I'm just so busy as the CEO, as the owner, I don't have time for this. My schedule's already... I can't imagine putting something else on my plate. Hmm. Would you also suggest that they send somebody to this in their place, an operations person, an executive assistant, whatever, even if they're like, you go, you take notes, you go through this course, here's the link get this done. Like if you don't go and do the whole thing yourself, send the link right now and tell whoever is in charge or whoever could be in charge to register for this and get signed, you know, get moving. I would do both. I would sign up just so you can get a sense for the 80, 20 of what's working and how it all works. And kind of, you know, so you have that big picture you vision can feel of it, yeah. how this fits into your overall business. And then if you have someone on your team who is a, a marketing person, an operations person, your right hand man or woman who is kind of the executor in your business, bring them in as well. So they can do these initial steps and you can collaborate on it in the same way that we collaborated with with your team as well. I mean, that's the role that you played. You didn't do all the little nitty gritty details. You had someone on your team kind of play that role. Many people, several people on your team play that role and uh, have the best of both worlds. So yeah, even if you're feeling like you've got too much on your plate, I'd recommend doing this just in case, because yeah. you never know that this could be the thing that completely transforms. That's it. something I didn't, I, I didn't think about, by the way, is you, you do want to experience the process. And I think that's critical. So you plus those people on your team. I think that would be good. Ryan, thanks, man. Look, I have 20 more questions I want to ask you, but we're out of time. So uh, that's a good sign, man. That's a good sign. I haven't learned everything I can learn from Ryan Levesque. We're not done with our conversations. There'll be more. Uh, so I now I have something to look forward to, Ryan. 
So one of those three buckets, man, I have something to look forward to. Anything else you want to say, man, before we go? No, I mean, it's been a, you know, a blast um, creating this quiz with, with you and your team. And uh, it's one of the things I got a tremendous amount of joy from. So um, I'm excited for everyone who's going to be moving forward in this experience. And I, I think, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think yourself going through this experience, I think opened up your eyes to see your business in a way that I think just there's multiple layers and multiple levels of opportunity that I think we uncovered in this process as well. Just going through it, never totally. mind the actual benefit of the quiz, but just totally. the discovery process of going through this. And so, um, yeah, for anyone who's excited or even curious about that, we're going to have some fun and we're going to get some work done as well. Beautiful to recognize the starting point. Beautiful to recognize like how do you ask the best questions in the fewest amount of words, which is what this process allows you to get to. And then you can take those questions and those concepts and those ideas and teach about them, speak about them, uh, talk about them on podcasts, you know, share them with your team. So many different ways to approach that. So guys, we'll have all of the links at frontroadads.com. You can go directly to the dadquiz.com and take that. And Ryan, one more time, the link they go to today now. Yes. Quizfunnel.com forward slash FRD for front row dads. And then make sure that you enter the coupon code. You have to enter the code in order to get that ticket price off FRD. Click the link that says apply coupon, and it'll take your ticket price from $100 down to zero. Don't share this outside the front row dad circles because it is something special for just this uh, group of men specifically. Guys, thanks for listening. Ryan, thank you. And uh, gentlemen, go take action. Take care. Gentlemen, thanks for listening to the show today. Two actions to take from here. First, implement one thing that you learned from the interview. And number two, share this episode with somebody who values being a family man with a business. If you're enjoying the Front Road Ad Podcast, the biggest thanks we ever get are honest reviews. So thank you for your feedback in advance. We read all of them. And if you want to learn more about The Brotherhood, which is our private community of 200 men, from six different countries, visit frontroadads.com for more info. If you're wondering what the hell the Brotherhood is all about, I'll leave you with some real feedback from guys who are active members and why they are part of our crew. Thanks again for listening to the show and I'll catch you on the next episode. You have this passion for wanting to find a way to make you a better parent and a better husband, just better in general. And so you develop this community of like-minded men that that aspire to be better and aspire to put family first and business second. And so to me, there's no greater place I'd rather be. You know, people ask me all the time, like if I could only pick one group, mastermind, organization, whatever to be part of besides my own, it's always yours and that's it. And by the way, part of that has to do with you and the leader you are and the way that you treat people and how you show up and the level of preparation that you have and the quality and amount of value that you offer. And then part of it's in the community that's been assembled and these unbelievable like-minded men that show up willing and ready to serve and to give and to share. And so to me, there's no better place that I can be spending my time. I look at two different things that we can be doing with our time. One of them is growing relationships and starting first with the most important relationships. And the other one is growing our financial acumen and, and our wealth to be able to do the things that we want to do and have impact and be able to spend time with the people that we value most by buying that time back. So to me, what you do and what I do is a great marriage of what I think is most important. And I would also throw in there that health is, you know, the other component of that. And I feel like the community that you've built, that each of us have built, is also centered around that. Because you talk about being a great husband, parent, that's going to come from taking care of yourself and making sure that you have the energy to be able to serve. And I, I do the same thing on a wealth standpoint, because wealth to me is not just about money. It's actually about having the time and the space to have your personal health. I would take having great health over no money any day of the week, rather than the inverse of that, having a lot of money, but no health. So to me, those are like the three most important components. And to me, we're always merging those three in the things that we each do. And so I think that's why there's a lot of crossover of, you know, members. That's why what you do resonates so much with me. What I do resonates so much with you. I joined as a lifetime member for that small little window where you offered it. I'm like, I'm in because I know if I'm going to commit my time anywhere, this is it because it makes me a better man. 
man. Makes me a better husband, makes me a better father. It encourages me to really step up my peer group with other like-minded men so that I can be on mission on point with other people that will hold me accountable at the highest level. John and I met a year and a half ago at the launch of my first book. And as we were going through the interview, I began to ask him questions about the brotherhood and it resonated within me that a community, a community of like-minded, like-hearted men that wanted to win, as he was just saying, at business and in life. And I'd reverse that. I want to win as a dad. And then I'd also love to be successful in business because I feel like if I, if I don't get the dad right, who cares what I did in business? That's my legacy. That's what lives beyond me. So to tribe up with a bunch of dudes going in the same direction with the pillars that are in place and the the way that not only are you encouraged, compelled, you're chided, you're you know, laughed with, but you get to pace yourself, but you can get around a band of dudes that you can trust, you can share with, you can grow with. And just recently completed a time with these guys. We did this fast at the start of the new year. Every day I would tune in to the little app where we were sharing comments. And I was so impressed how you could see guys that were further down the road and things like this, guys that were just starting and the camaraderie, the encouragement. So for myself, this was a, a total fit. And I would encourage any dude that's looking for a place where you can feel connected with a band of guys wanting to go in the same direction, Front Row Dads for you.